Hi guys, it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel. I am still currently working through the 6x6 sketch bundle class that Allison Davis is currently hosting on a private Facebook group. Unfortunately, you cannot join the group. Um, I want to say it was the end of May that you had in order to join. I haven't really been participating a whole lot in the chat and stuff, mostly just because I am sort of still trying to catch up on some of the sketches, I guess. So if you have the sketch bundle, then you are familiar with this sketch. This one is the one that they were working on this week. And it basically features a bunch of like wonky four by four areas, whether that's a photo or whether that's paper. And the photos that I had matched to the sketch were when we did kind of like a little mini room makeover for my son and I had purchased some prints from Etsy that you could just kind of print at home that were video game themed. Um, he got new bedding that was Minecraft themed. I went through and sorted all his Legos by color and kind of set up a little Lego station for him and basically had done everything while he was at school for his birthday. And he absolutely loved everything, um, including like just the small things that I didn't think he'd really care about, like a new rug for his floor and, and that kind of thing. So I don't have obviously anything that's like Minecraft themed or... I probably could have gone with some simple stories, um, some of their older boy lines that have like video game themes and stuff like that. I chose to just kind of do my own almost monochromatic type thing, mostly just with greens and some black thrown in. So instead of using a specific 6x6 pad, I went through and, and pulled just a bunch of different tone on tone greens and blacks and one that I guess you could kind of call white but it was in with some blacks and to start my video here because this was basically where I started my process was I just kind of played around with attempting to make my own pattern paper that was going to support the theme of my layout and this stamp set that I have I'll post a link where you can find it it is a Minecraft themed stamp set from Ink Road Stamps. Um, I was a little disappointed when I went to use it just because there's a bunch of little like pixels or little squares all in a row and so I thought that they were more of like a border stamp but it's actually individual little tiny squares and I just kind of felt like uh, you know, maybe maybe put one or two individual squares in there, but I was wondering if it was kind of a design goof on the stamp and, and the software didn't read it as a whole border, but I emailed them and I'm kind of waiting to hear back and see if I get a response and see if if it was just a goof in the design or if it was actually intended to be that way. Because there's no way that you can line up all those little squares in a perfect line like they come on the sheet to make a border, which is really what I wanted to be able to use. So f basically, again, I started just with playing around with the stamps because I really wasn't sure where I was going to go with this. Originally, I thought I was going to do a lot of embellishing and just a lot of like little mini pages within those squares. And by the time I got to the end, that was not not kind of where I ended up at. This one was one of those ones where I kind of had to force myself through the layout. I basically, anytime one of my scrapbook friends was like, hey, do you want a video chat? I was like, yes, 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 yes. And I said yes because I knew that it would sort of force me to sit down and actually get something done on this page. And again, this took me three or four days, but it was mostly just sitting here staring at stuff. It wasn't like actual things that I was putting together. Um, and again, I think it's just one of those things where not every single sketch is going to be an instant inspiration. And again, there's no reason that I, I don't have to use every sketch. That's just a personal challenge that I kind of issued to myself was to go ahead and do all of the sketches and see what happens creatively, basically. So... I trimmed down all my photos, kind of figured out where everything was going to go. 
and just kind of making sure, do I need any more photos? Is this going to be enough? And then from here is where I started just going through my paper pads and pulling stuff out. Now for this one, I did not do the cardstock trick where I tape cardstock to my trimmer to basically keep everything trimmed to the same size because these are going to sort of be stacked and layered and wonky. So I didn't really see a point in making sure that they were all exactly the same um, cut size because you're not it's not lined up like a grid where you really do want to make sure that everything is cut to be the same size. So I was pulling from a lot of the basic pads that I have set aside for this whole class. I went and pulled a lot of greens from different, I think it was two or three different Doodlebug Halloween collections. They almost always have um, green tone on tones in there, black as well. And I think I got one from like a My Favorite Things 6x6 six six pad. And then the ones that I've kind of made my own Minecraft paper were trimmed down from a Simple Stories Basics, which is basically, again, it's tone on tone. And it was from a more feminine paper collection where one side had kind of like a eyelet fabric pattern on it and the other one had like a linen fabric pattern on it. So I just went with the linen one to be able to kind of make my own pattern paper and go from there. And then all of the photos that were smaller than 4 by 4 so the 3 by 3s and then instead of doing 2 by 2s like she depicted, I just cropped them small based on what I had. There was no way two of them I could have gone in a square shape. So again, I just kind of make it work for what I've got. So all of those smaller photos, I went ahead and mounted on white cardstock to help them kind of stand out from the background patterns. And then I went back to my dies, and I can't remember if I had pulled these in my prep or not, but these are also from My Favorite Things, and I want to say they're called Game On, no, Game Controller, and there's a large one and a small one, and my guess would be that these are designed to kind of look more like an Xbox remote which I don't really care to me a remote to remote when I'm doing like a layout, but it was kind of a nice um, surprise to see that they were designed to look more like an Xbox because that's what he has upstairs in his room. So I cut the base controller piece three or four times with some white cardstock to give it some dimension and just kind of give it more of a chipboard feel. And then I ran the other shapes through just some different My Favorite Things cardstock that I had from some of their card kits. And I just picked like a light blue, a green, a yellow, and a red. I didn't go look at a remote to see if that matched or anything. I just wanted to kind of fill those in and make them look more like a game controller. And then from here, again, I already threw out every box that I've gotten anything shipped in. I need to remember to keep one. So in order to do splatters, I just grabbed this lid from a bucket where I've been keeping um, like purge supplies in. And I just took a black ink pad and some water onto a acrylic block and just kind of dipped a paintbrush in it and I'm just flicking it all over. Basically, I'm trying to add a little bit more interest into the plain white cardstock that I'm using. And to me, if the photos are all kind of wonky and jumbled, I want something else representing that kind of chaos. So for me, that's splatters. I don't typically do splatters. And then I did add another layer just using a ink pad, which again, I think this is from my favorite things. It's just a green one. And I set those aside to dry and then I went ahead and grabbed just an alphabet die set and I can't, I think I've looked for this one and I'm pretty sure wherever I bought it, it has retired, but, and I'll post a link to this one. I think it's Concord and Ninth has one that's very similar to this, but you actually get a couple extra pieces in it. So to me, it's actually a better buy and I might actually order it soon. Um, and then just have two kind of similar sets, I guess. But this way I can make basically my own 
thickers, so DIY thickers, otherwise known as dickers, which apparently if you type the word dickers into your friend's live scrapbook feed, it makes her have to approve the comment, which means I kind of want to do it every time now because it's just kind of funny to me. But I actually like doing these. It kind of makes me stop thinking about the layout and just kind of relax and enjoy something that's maybe most people would say is tedious, but I find this kind of thing to be relaxing. So I, again, I just cut, I think I did three layers of a white cardstock and then one layer of a green tone on tone pattern and just kind of layered all of them together. And I'm just using this liquid glue from Nuvo, which I have been loving. I feel like I've tried I've tried so many different glues. I mean, I'm telling you, whatever one you're going to suggest in the comments, I've probably tried it. I've tried the different bottles. I've tried watering them down. I've tried the ones with the push pins, all that. For whatever reason, this one hasn't clogged yet. So I might go back and order like two more bottles because knowing me, by the time I wait for this one to get empty and I need to order one, Nuva will stop making them. I feel like that's what usually happens to me. But if you haven't tried that glue... I would suggest maybe trying it, especially when it's probably this almost the same price as some of those little ones, like the little glue pins. So I don't know, just throwing that out there that I actually really like it. I've only been using it maybe the last year, but again, it hasn't, it's not getting clogged. It's not like dr getting dried up in the nozzle. It, I haven't had to use a push pin or a needle to clean it out. So to me, that's kind of like a winner with glue. So from there, I am going ahead and attaching everything to my page. And again, I just use the sketch as a guide to making these line up in that like wonky, whimsical way, but still managing to look intentional. <laughs> so I suck at that on my own. So I will literally look at the sketch and kind of line everything up the way that she's kind of got it depicted because... It just, to me, that's that's what works. And again, this was just one of those things where every time I went and did part of the layout, I was like, okay, I'm not loving it, but I'm getting it done kind of a thing. And I decided to go ahead and ink the edges of stuff with black soot distress ink. I didn't do like a heavy hand. I really just wanted it to kind of not only stand out from all these different pattern papers, but again, it's going to go in with that whole like messy, wonky, whimsical feel that the layout already has from the papers and the photos kind of being not linear. There's splatter on the background. The pattern papers are also not linear. So to me, that's just kind of like inking the edges is, is just in line with all of that. And then I, like I said, originally I thought, okay, these are, these kind of all look like little mini pages to me. And anytime I do like a grid style layout or something like that, where you can kind of look at these areas as little pages, I tend to go heavy on the embellishments. And that was kind of my plan. But I was sort of running into things where I didn't have... Obviously, I'm stash diving for this and kind of coming up with my own theme and making things to fit within them. So I already knew I'm not going to find anything that is pre-made and going to work. And it wasn't until after I finished the layout that I thought, you know, it would have been really easy to just go into silhouette and kind of make my own creeper cut file with some squares and that kind of thing. But I think it just was feeling lazy and I really just wanted to get it done. And sometimes... Getting it done means kind of going simple and, you know, just kind of letting the photos and the journaling speak for themselves. So I was having a hard time trying to decide where I wanted to put the title and things. Originally, I thought I was going to go ahead and type my journaling onto that lined pattern paper, but it was so tiny that I was like, you know what, I'll just do strips that way no matter what I end up saying, I've got enough room. And then I was chatting with a friend and she reminded me that the game controller 
die cuts from my favorite things came out during a release where they had a video game themed stamp set as well and I was like oh yeah pretty sure I bought that during a retirement sale and I did so this one is game on and I'm pretty sure it is retired but I can't remember if they brought it back so I just picked a sentiment that was in there that kind of looked like um like those phrase stickers on sticker sheets and I'm going to have that be part of my title or the subtitle to my title. So my title is basically going to be Surprise Makeover Achievement Unlocked. I thought about using like spelling out Minecraft with the letters and I kept saying, you know, no, that doesn't really make sense because it wasn't like his whole room was Minecraft theme. It was more of we just kind of did some updating to his room and made it feel more age appropriate for him, which... This one, I think he would have turned seven. Yeah, this would have been his seventh birthday. And he's already kind of, even at seven, sort of phasing out. Like, he doesn't want to play with his Animal Planet sets anymore. He's just kind of into his tablet and his video games. And even, like, the photo of his bookshelf right there in the last two years, most of those, like, larger picture books are gone the cat in the hat books have been, you know, passed down to his sister and basically both shelves of that book are full of chapter books. So he's, I don't know, he's just sort of this boring teenager, but he's only nine right now. So I did just kind of make sure to take some pictures of some different things around his room that I knew were important to him and things that we had changed up or cleaned out or updated in in a way and then these are probably my favorite thickers that they've ever come out with I have them in a couple colors I have no idea what the font is but they're just these chubby lowercase foam thickers and I really prefer the foam ones because I don't have to add glue to them I feel like all the other ones that I ever use the chipboard ones um I can't think of what other material. It's like they're still chipboard on the bottom. All of those ones I end up having to add glue to them. But the foam ones, I find that not only can I put them down and move them, but they also somehow manage to stay attached. So those are just kind of my favorite. Um, so again, back to the embellishments, because I knew that I didn't have anything already made. I just kind of pulled out my leftover binder and went to my green section and to my black section just to kind of see if there was any just like basic looking shapes or phrases and in this case it was an arrow sticker, um, a black like tag that I'm just going to turn sideways and use it more like a banner sticker. And then a phrase sticker that basically just said, let's go play, but it had the green and black elements to it. So this was probably around the time where I was like, you know what, I'm just going to keep things simple. There's a lot going on with the photos kind of being everywhere and the papers not being lined up and stuff like that. So I just kind of kept it simple. Um, three four like four three or four of the actual squares with photos on them don't actually have any embellishments on them maybe like a little sticker or something or maybe like an enamel dot and that's about it and I'm 100% okay with that I feel like sometimes you just have to be like less is more because if you're struggling to find something to put on the layout, then that might be the sign that you don't need anything on the layout, if that makes sense. Like if you're just trying to put embellishments on paper for the sake of doing that, I don't know, I feel like maybe you don't need it. Like, I don't know, take a step back. And that was kind of my case with this one was I would, I'd come chat with a friend or two, work on it for a little bit, walk away, come back the next day and kind of be like, okay, I need to move on. I need to get something done. So I, it was like, you know, today I'm going to make sure I get the title done. And the next day I'm going to make sure I get the embellishments done. Next time I came up there, it was like, okay, I'm going to type out my journaling and get those down and just that kind of thing. Um, I have definitely learned over the years of doing these classes that some combinations of a sketch the photos I pick and the supplies that I pick are just like instant 
makes sense instant the layout i'm gonna love everything's gonna be great about it i'm gonna love the process i'm gonna love the end result and some of them are just gonna be kind of like this where you know it is it just kind of it is what it is which i never thought that i would say because i hate that phrase but it, sometimes it's more of settling into I got the sketch done, I can move on to the next one. These photos are no longer sort of sitting on my computer, they're now scrapbooked. This story or this moment is now documented and can kind of now live in an album that my kids can then enjoy. Hopefully that makes sense. I feel like sometimes, I feel like, I don't know what else to say other than sometimes, lay, sometimes layouts just aren't my favorite, sometimes the sketch isn't my favorite or the supplies are uninspiring or I'm just I'm actually not in the mood to craft but I'm kind of making myself do it anyways because I need that break and I need something else going on and so that's that's just kind of I think what's happened in the last I don't know three or four sketches probably but and I've said it before being able to kind of reach out and talk to scrappy friends and just kind of sit and visit with them while they're doing the same thing and they're kind of complaining about the same thing where they're saying you know i don't know what it is about this page but i just don't like it or you know i bought this six by six pad and then i'm actually looking at the patterns and they're just not working like things that i experience being able to hear from somebody else is just kind of nice i guess so pretty much the last thing that I ended up doing was the journaling and typically I tend to do photos and papers first, title, journaling, and then do my embellishing. So I just thought it was kind of funny that for whatever reason this one I ended up waiting for the journaling at the end because even if I don't glue it to my layout towards the end, most often even before I start the layout, I've at least typed it up and it's just kind of ready on my desktop for me to format either into strips or if I was going to print it on a tag or something like that. It's, it, you know, it's ready to go. Man, this one, I, I think finally, like the, the last day I worked on this, you know, my friend, one of my friends was like, Hey, I'm going to go scrapbook. Do you want, do you want to see if anybody else is up and, and do a group chat or whatever? And I was like, yeah, give me like 10 minutes. I, I like, I have to go type and print out this journaling just so that it's done and I can like sit and, and finish the layout like while we visit with friends and stuff. Otherwise I feel like I just would have sat there and chatted and like stared at this layout like I had done three previous nights. But I don't know. And I feel like I'm hoping that with it being a new month, you know, it's Saturday, it's the first, I need to kind of reset my room. I want to start on sketch number 10 and be able to do a layout share with for you guys just showing layouts one through 10. There's 20 sketches in this bundle. So it's a good halfway point. And then once I get my room cleaned up, um, maybe I'll do a workspace Wednesday video for it and edit that. Then I want to go ahead and sit down and do like I've done with the first 10 sketches and just look at five of them at a time and prep everything for those five. So with that, um, there is my layout and all of the photos for you guys. Again, there's links below for where you can find the photos and any available products. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye!